Okay, so let's try to do some homework by yourself. So in this video, let's try to do uh, the first page from question one, three, five, and also the next page, so including question six, seven, eight, and eleven. So pause the video now, and we'll go through them together. Two thousand years later. Okay, let's take a look of the first question. So it said the car must drive for one hundred twenty. So this is the distance, and then this is the time, and this question is a bit unconventional, like what you may see normally. Uh, but uh, let's just try to do it together. So it says you have a total of that long, but then for the first and a half hour, you only drive for that much. Calculate the speed for the remaining journey. So that means the remaining one hour, basically. So let's think about that. For the first and a half hour, you actually went for 1.5 times 70 because apparently this is hour, this is km per hour. So if you look at the unit, you can then work out this is in km. And that is uh, 105 km. And so for the remaining um, distance, then that would be 120 minus 105, that would be 15 km. And so simply the remaining um, time, which is one hour, then you need 15 km per hour. Okay, so this is just uh, a warm up question, maybe. Let's take a look of the next question. Uh, this question, I remember, it is also quite unconventional. We have two cyclists, A and B, a little bit like IQ question. And they are separated by 70 km. So maybe the best thing you do is draw a diagram, A and B, and they separated by 70 km. And then from time t equals zero, it start to go towards each other with A as in 15 km per hour, B is going towards the other side, 20 km per hour. At the same time, there is a fly inset that sitting on A and start flying to B. So you can imagine uh, it go to here with a velocity of 30 km per hour. As soon as the flies reach B, immediately it turn to uh, A and then B, A and B and B. So basically you can imagine the fly may go something like this at the end. Okay, something probably something like this, all right, roughly. Uh, and part A asks you to find the position where two cyclists and the fly would eventually meet each other. So uh, the key idea is that like this is, a, like I said, a bit like those IQ questions, right? So you need to really visualize it very carefully. Uh, in fact, the speed of the fly doesn't really matter a lot in terms of uh, where they will meet because where they will meet it would depends on uh, the two cyclists where they meet and then by that time the fly will stop so uh, if you try to take the relative speed imagine one of the cyclists is stationary then the other one is approaching it with the speed of a total of 15 plus 20 so basically you could have uh, the time equals to 70 divide 15 plus 20. So by that time, because you can imagine by each hour, you increase the distance for 15 and also increase the distance for 20 towards each other. So both of them will count. So then actually it takes two hours to meet each other. And by that means, then A would have moved for 30 km by that time. So the answer for A, uh, the position, since A uh, it is set to be 0 km, that is the position. So uh, the position should be 30 km, simply. For part B, determine the distance traveled by the fly. So like I said, uh, since we already know the time, which is 2, two hour, then how does the path actually move like whether it's like this the one that i draw or or a, a little bit side off or with more more of this actually it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day the fly should have a constant speed of 30 km per hour and it took two hour so that means the total distance that the fly did is two hour times 30 km 
per hour so that is 60 km and that is question three number five hopefully we can see a more <laughs> classic typical question so here we got initial speed u become a new uh, velocity v travel for two seconds so t find the acceleration a so i suppose it's just a usual equation where it's v equals to u plus a t so v is x u is 2 a is unknown t is 2 so then you can have 6 divided 2 so a equals to 3 then yeah that is simply how you calculate yeah even uh, easier than the previous question so let's take a look of page 2 now it says uh, accelerate from red so u to v in time t find the distance s so uh, I think the equation should be s equals to u plus v divided by 2 the more you do you find out you don't have to rely on data booklet and this is um, something hopefully you can do I would appreciate if you can do it u is 0 v is 28 divided by 2 t is 9 and then using your calculator you find out s equals to 1 to 6 meter next question you have u brought to rest okay v is rest zero over the distance so s is the displacement find the acceleration find a so should be v square equals to u square plus 2as so v is zero u is 12 square a is the unknown s is 45 then you can find a calculator time the answer you find should be negative 1.6 meter per second square okay question eight uh, at the origin has an initial speed so you move with an acceleration so a position become 16 so in fact it starts from origin so now it's position 16. so in fact s is simply 16 meter and determine when okay so it's actually finding out time okay so knowing what to find is very important too so from this case i believe is s equals to ut plus half a t square so 16 looks like quadratic equation again a is 2 t square and so once again uh, use the program a should be 1 b should be negative 6 c should be negative 16 then you should find the answer to be x or negative 2 and negative 2 you have to reject cause again you can't go back in time so the answer is only 8 second question 11 two balls are dropped from rest so you same height okay one of the ball maybe I can draw it now so one uh, let's go A and B maybe one is dropped one second after the other one the distance that separates two ball two second after the second ball is dropped so basically means for A it's dropped for three seconds for B dropped for two seconds and then you want to find the separation so um, both of them has an initial speed of zero and then you can take acceleration equals to g equals to 10 let's take it as positive for simplicity so basically we just have to calculate the distance for each of them and I would like to use the equation of this one and so we can find s say um, s2 first maybe for b then it will be 0 plus half 10 2 square and so by the time you went for two seconds you have five times four so 20 meter so similarly maybe I'll just do it here to keep the space clean so it will be it's not a very good way to do but I'll use the same equation or you can use uh, to calculate by proportion so s 3 is 
simply 5 times 9 so it will be 45 meter and then so by calculating the difference between these two so the delta s will simply be 45 minus 20 that will be 25 in exam make sure you write down the steps also part b uh, so they will happen to a distance separating the ball as time so on i think intuitively you should be able to think it should be further and further apart but then um we as physicists we like to show in a more uh, edge hole formula like in a theoretical framework so how to do it is simply uh, try to make this question general generalized so for part a for example is is a specific time s so what if it is n seconds so think about this like if ball b has passed for the m second and then oh by the way i should not say I don't know, I think it's fine, S is fine. And then for A, it will be N plus one second. Then uh, what will be delta S B? Okay, so uh, we can we can think about this way. So say in this case for N, for S B, displacement for B, then it will be uh, the same equation, U T plus half, blah, blah, blah. And, and so U is zero, so I'll just keep it at zero. Half A N square. And then for S A, it will be also zero and then half A N plus one square. So if you find the delta S, which is A minus B, that one, because A is simply further like down below, and you have you will be able to find half A A is ten once again. And then you should have N plus N plus one square minus N square. And so you should have five if you try to expand it that like this is a very simple mathematics right n square plus two n plus one minus n square that will be five n square sorry not there's no n square anymore uh it will actually let me just expand throughout 10 n plus five yeah i think that that's all so then uh in the unit is in meter apparently and then you can see uh, since the time goes on, then n will become larger. Upward arrow re represent is become larger. And then delta s will also become larger also in a relationship of this. You can also double check it by substituting n as in with uh, the equation from like the situation in A, which is n equals to two. So if you substitute into Two, then it would ten times two plus five equals to twenty-five. So twenty-five is exactly the answer that we find in part A. So hopefully that verify the equation is correct. Also, okay. So that is all for these two pages.